Hey everybody, welcome back to Cooking with Nick. Today I'm going to try something for the sweet tooth. Delicious coconut based donuts. Let's jump right in. First things first, let's make the dough. For that I need a cup of milk, which I'm going to add half a tablespoon of active dry yeast. And to feed the yeast, I'm giving them a tablespoon of sugar. Give it a little mix to dissolve everything and leave at room temperature for 10 to 15 minutes. Yeast are happy, you can tell from the bubbles. Okay, time for our dry ingredients. We need about three cups of all purpose flour, but I'm only adding two now. About a teaspoon of cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, a tablespoon of sugar. one whole egg, one egg yolk, a teaspoon of vanilla, a tablespoon of butter. I went really light with the spices and flavorings because we want subtle flavors in our donut. No one flavor should pop out. That's how I like it. Go ahead and add the yeast mixture. Mix until everything is combined and coming together. This is a high hydration dough, which means the liquid to flour ratio is higher. This way we get soft fluffy donuts. We can now add the next cup of flour to make our dough workable by hand. Flour doesn't always hydrate the same, so I always start with less and add more when needed. Now is a good time to add the salt that I forgot. I can now go in and work the dough by hand. If you have a stand mixer, good on you. We really want to get the dough as smooth as possible, but it should still be really sticky. If it's not sticky at this point, then it's probably too dry and your donut might end up with a dense, tough texture. Kitchen smells like a baker right now. I'm going to wrap the dough and leave it at room temperature for about 45 minutes to rise. Forty-five minutes later the dough has doubled. Oh that feels soft. Go ahead and flour the work surface generously and spread it out. Now let's roll out the dough. Ensure the rolling pin is floured too. Roll out the dough to an even thickness of about a quarter of an inch. The dough is really soft so I don't have to use a lot of pressure. I don't have a donut cutter so I'm going to improvise. How many people own donut cutters by the way? Anyways, this disposable cup should do the trick. Now we only need something for our donut holes. Mm. This looks like the perfect size. Now I have an empty bottle of alcohol lying around and I don't really want that. Nice. Real quick I'm going to grab a baking tray for my donut. It's not to bake them, I just need to put them on something. I had a tray generously, 
it's just to keep them from sticking. We could use flour, but that always falls off in the oil and burns. Use a disposable cup to cut out circles. You can maximize the amount of donuts you get by keeping the circles tight. Yeah, this cup is too disposable. Or maybe I'm using too much pressure. You can always roll out the extra dough and cut out more donuts. Now for the donut holes. Try to aim for the dead center. We can fry these center pieces later. Although I'm not really a fan. Go ahead and remove the extra dough. Looks like a few didn't get cut out properly. Just go over them with the cutter and it should be fine. So now I'm placing all my donuts on the grease baking tray to rise a second time for maximum fluff. At room temperature this will take between 15 to 25 minutes. They don't have to double in size like before. Cover with an inverted baking tray of the same size and let it sit till we're ready. While the donuts are doing their thing, let's make the coconut rum glaze. This is a personal favorite because it tastes so good and it's really simple to make. Sift one cup of powdered sugar. We sift to make our glaze smooth and lump free. Use a wish for those stubborn lumps. Here I have a quarter cup of canned coconut milk, which I'm going to add gradually while we skin. Just add a little at a time till we reach the right consistency. I could throw everything in now, but the thickness of the coconut milk is variable from brand to brand and from can to can, so it's good to be conservative. Canned coconut milk is best in this instance because it has stabilizers. J. Ray and his nephew, a little splash. Be conservative here too. Too much rum might overpower all the other flavors. That's done. Perfect consistency. So the donuts have risen to the occasion. You know they are ready when you push and they don't push back. I have a pot of vegetable oil going on low heat. Just going to place the donuts in. Low heat is very important because these donuts brown really easy. So we want a solid rise and for them to actually cook before they brown. These smell really good before, but now that they are cooking, the flavor is intense. These have popped up nicely. Once it's nice and brown on one side, just give it a flip. I never really like the little donut holes because they are hard as hell to flip. I could figure something out, but they are a little too much hassle for me. Oh, these are ready. Place on a wire rock to drain off excess oil. Grab the coconut rum glaze. I already started glazing a few. You can see how light that donut is. It's kind of floating in the glaze. The glaze is going to solidify a bit, but it's still going to be sticky. Glaze 
Okay, it's a little wrong store. Little bite-sized donuts, but I'm still not a fan. And there you have it. Coconut rum glazed donuts. Light, fluffy, and the smell is something else. I use the excess dough to make this twisted donut. Feels kinda nostalgic, I had these a lot while growing up. Okay, so now it's time to give it a try. Wow, that tastes amazing. The coconut glaze is really nice. The texture is nice and soft and you can smell all the subtle spice flavors. Definitely have to try this one. 